Dr. Diego Gomez is a researcher at the Ontario Veterinary College, and he's collaborating on three exciting new research projects. Welcome, Dr. Gomez, and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me today. I understand you joined the team at OVC in uh, 2020. What made you decide to make the move to the University of Guelph? Correct. I completed my PhD in 2017 at the University of Guelph under the supervision of Dr. Scott Wiss and Luis Arroyo, working on uh, veterinary infectious diseases. Then I went to uh, University of Florida as an assistant professor. But uh, after two years been there, uh, I decided to move back to the University of Guelph for three reasons. The first one is the university and the college. The University of Guelph, and specifically the Ontario Veterinary College, are consistently ranked as one of the world's top veterinary colleges. Second, the researchers and the type of research conducted at the Ontario Veterinary College. Researchers at uh, the OVC conduct, conduct innovative, collaborative research aiming to improve the health and the well-being of animals, humans, and ecosystems. This work covers a broad range of disciplines, from basic laboratory investigation to epidemiological studies, to applied clinical research in equine and food animals. And I feel that's what I wanted to do. And finally, uh, the community. The University of Wealth is a friendly, open, and caring community. The Ontario Veterinary College is a home to students from across Canada and from around the world, making this university one of the more diverse uh, I have been. The emphasis that the university put to protect and support diversity and inclusion is so important for me, especially because, because I am a Latino. So I feel that at the university and at the college, people understand, accept, and value differences between individuals. This is why I decided to. Uh, came back to University of Well. Can you briefly describe your research project on gut bacteria and what that may mean for the survival of horses with severe diarrhea? Okay, uh, this project has a couple of objectives. First, uh, we want to describe the gastrointestinal bacteria of healthy horses and compare it to that of horses uh, with diarrhea. So we could establish which bacteria are associated with healthy gut and which bacteria become important during diarrhea. If we are, all, we are able to define that or knowing which bacteria is good for the gastrointestinal tract, we can generate new ideas for future research on the areas, for example, of probiotics or other approaches that help us to reestablish what we call the normal healthy gut bacteria. The second objective of this project is to examine the gut bacteria of surviving and no surviving diarrhea horses. Identifying a specific bacteria associated with survival of horses with diarrhea can help uh, to develop new treatments approaches to target these beneficial bacteria. For example, we can start to use prebiotics that are substances that we use to feed the good, healthy bacteria. So we hope that with that, we speed up the recovery of the horses with diarrhea and um, speed up the treatment and make the treatments a bit cheaper for the owners. Similar, if we discover bacteria associated with mortality, we could design some rapid diagnostic tests such as PCR assays to detect those bacteria in the feces of the diarrhea horses. And if we put that together with the clinical signs of the patient and other uh, results from the blood work that indicate severity of the disease, we can establish a prognosis for this patient. We can tell the owner, your horse is more likely to survive or your horse is more likely to die based on the clinical signs, blood work, and the bacteria present in the feces. What are the potential practical applications of this research for horse owners? Um, well, we expect that this research helps us to design better and cheaper treatment for diarrhea horses. We also aim to reduce the mortality of horses with diarrhea. Uh, interestingly, a recent study 
from one of our residents here at the Ontario Veterinary College show that three out of 10 horses hospitalized for acute diarrhea will die. They will not survive. If we learn which bacteria are good for the horse's gastrointestinal tract, we will be able to provide new treatments, as I say, to speed up the recovery. And hopefully we can decrease the mortality rates on uh, horses with diarrhea. You're also looking at the way we deliver fluids to critically ill foals in, in your other research study. Uh, apparently, we may be lagging quite far behind the human studies. Can you explain this project? You are correct. Um, critical ill foals uh, presented to teaching hospital and particularly to the Ontario Veterinary College, um, we often administer them intravenous fluids to correct and maintain normal hydration status. Historically, administration of low sodium, what we call hypotonic fluids, as opposed to fluids with sodium concentration similar to those in the blood of the foal or of the children have been recommended. And this practice was extrapolated from guidelines developed for healthy ch children in 1950. However, this recommendation has recently been questioned in human medicine because some children can develop low blood sodium levels and they can die actually because administration of these low sodium fluids. Thus, in children, it is now recommended to use fluids containing sodium levels similar to those of the blood of the kids. However, in, in, in falls or for sick falls, it is still recommended using fluids with low sodium contain, the ones that were using, used in the 1950s for, 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 for children. And this recommendation lack of evidence-based support. So I say this is just purely extrapolated from the human side. Therefore, we, we aim to compare the effect of low sodium versus sodium contain versus normal sodium contain on the hell of the fall. Specifically, we want to see how the blood sodium concentration change, the heart rate, and the urine production of those critical infos. We hope to demonstrate that similar to children, fluid with normal levels of sodium are safe for critically ill falls, and that we don't need to use fluid with low sodium uh, concentrations. So again, just a quick summary of the potential applications for the horse owner. Well, um, the results of this study are expected to provide data to support evidence-based protocols and develop, uh, development of guidelines for fluid therapy in critically falls. So we hope that improving fluid therapy administration will help us to reduce the mortality of critical ill falls. Again, similar to the first project, our goal is to decrease the cost of treatment and reduce the mortality of our patients. Finally, your third study also involves studying the, the delivery of fluids to sick foals, this time looking at the integrity of the blood vessels before and after fluid uh, resuscitation. What will be involved with this research? Okay, let, let me start by explaining uh, what is the endothelial glycocalis. The endothelial glycocalis is a thin gel-like layer covering the internal surface of the blood vessels that regulate the transport of fluids from the blood vessels to the tissue, also the transport of proteins, oxygen, and nutrients from the blood to the tissue. The endothelial glycocalis also provides anticoagulant effects and protects the blood vessels from toxic insults. Damage to the endothelial glycocalis occur when the blood supply to the tissue is compromised. For example, when there is inflammation in the tissue. And in patients with sepsis or bloodborne infection, they can have some compromised endothelial glycocalis. Interestingly, in people, there is an increased evidence that administration of large volume of fluids during resuscitation of critical ill patients damage this endothelial glycocalis, even more than the disease itself which allow the proteins and fluids to go out of the blood vessel, causing impairment or damage 
to the function of different organs, including the lungs, the liver, kidney, and the brain. In fact, increased blood levels of markers associated with endo endothelial glycocalis damage are associated with increased risk of death. So we start to think about that and, and, and how can we bring this research into the equine site. So these findings from human medicine are important because administration of resuscitation in intravenous fluids is one of the most important and common therapeutic intervention in critical ill falls that presented to our hospital. However, no information is available regarding the blood levels of markers associated with endothelial glycocalis damage in critical ill falls and whether those levels are associated with mortality and if the administration of fluid resuscitation uh, damages the endothelial glycocalis. So we designed this study to determine the blood levels of, the, of endothelial glycocalis damage markers in critical falls and compare this with the healthy ones to see if there is an association of damage of the blood vessel and the mortality of the patient. And also, we want to measure the endothelial glycocalic markers before and after administration of fluids to determine if the, the current practices of administration of fluids will damage further the endothelial glycocalis and likely worsening the outcome of the patient or predisposing them to die. That's, that's in general terms, the project of endothelial glycocalis. Mm. Uh, I'm sensing that the answer to potential applications for the horse owner is again going to be lowering that uh, mortality rate. Correct. So if we find that the rapid administration of fluids to these septic falls has detrimental effects on the health of the blood vessels, we will need to reevaluate the current practices of administration of fluids in falls. And then we will need to develop new strategies, strategies for administration of those fluids. So as mentioned with the, with the other two previous studies, the final objective is to improve the survival rate of the falls and establish evidence-based guidelines for treatment of these critically ill falls. Thank you, Dr. Gomez. In uh, closing, is there anything you would like to emphasize, sum up, or glance into the future of your three studies at the OVC? Uh, well, yes. Um, I'd like to emphasize that the research conducted by our group is clinically applicable and aims to improve the approaches that we use to treat sick horses and foals. Our ultimate goal is decreasing the mortality of critically ill foals and adult horses because this will have a positive emotional and economical impact for horses owners.